This is part two of the um, chapter one on viruses lecture. Um, this is slide number eight. So I think this is where we um, left off from the first um, lecture. So this just shows you how a virus attaches to its host. Um, it says many viruses use some sort of glycoprotein. You may remember glycoprotein from um, you may remember glycoproteins from um, uh, Bio 111. Let's try this. There we go. Uh, it's a protein that's located in the plasma membrane called the XCT receptor here. Um, but it's a protein located on the plasma membrane of cells that contains a carbohydrate chain attached to it. So that's what the glyco means, is it, it contains a carbohydrate chain. And sometimes um, glycolipids and glycoproteins are used um, for just to identify the cell, but sometimes they're used as a receptor. So viruses can bind to these receptors and um, attach to their host cell this way. So, So what we call the um, molecule in the plasma membrane of the host cell that the virus attaches to, we call that the viral receptor. And this step in um, you know, virus, the virus infecting the host is called attachment. This is called the attachment step. The virus itself, um, it depends on the host cell. Sometimes the entire virus will enter the cell, but many times the virus will only inject its um, DNA or RNA into the cell. So uh, it just says the viruses have simply evolved to make use of molecules normally found on cell surfaces for their own replication. They've, they've learned to use host cells in order to replicate since they can't do it on their own. So. Um, this viral receptor, the viral receptor is actually a um, glycoprotein. And then the cell receptor, um, the XCT receptor, is the receptor on the host cell which the virus re uh, attaches to. So um, this, this particular virion is called, called the KSHV virion. Um, I was looking to see if there was a description, sorry. But, um, but anyway, it's just a particular virion um, that um, you can see has an envelope um, because this would be, let me show you the pointer. Okay, so this hexagon would be the capsid, the protein capsid, and then this is an envelope. Some viruses don't have an envelope, but this one does. Okay, and then um, this, this one, you may recognize this um, virus because we saw an image of it taken by um, an electron microscope in one of our earlier slides. Um, this is called a bacteriophage. This is bacteriophage T4, and it looks a little bit like a spaceship, to me anyway, um, or an alien of some, of some sort. But it, um, it, it is a virus that attacks bacteria. It's a virus that targets bacteria. That's what a bacteriophage is. And it says the bacteriophage T4 has a DNA containing head group and tail fibers that attach to host cells. So it has the, um, the head group, as you can see here, which contains the DNA and it's surrounded by a capsid, and then, um, which is just a geometrical shape. And then it has a tail with tail fibers here, which attach to the host, and the host, of course, is a bacterium. All right, another shape um, is the shape that you see here for an adenovirus. Um, the adenovirus uh, contains a capsid only. It does not contain a, an envelope as well, so um, but you can see the shape here, and, and all of these little molecules here and here, these are called capsomeres. So the capsid is, is composed of capsomeres. And you can also see the glycoproteins, 
which are used for attaching to the host. And these are these glycoprotein teens look uh, like spikes. Sorry, stuttering today. I don't know why. Um, so the adenovirus has a double stranded DNA um, for its genetic material. And the shape is called icosahedral. The capsid is called icosahedral. I knew it was geometrical, but I forgot the, the actual um, specific name for it. But anyway, the adenovirus, you want to remember, has an icosahedral capsid. And um, it's transmitted orally and causes a variety of illnesses in vertebrates. In, in other words, um, animals with a backbone including um, eye and respiratory infection. All right, and here is a virus shape using HIV, the HIV human immunodeficiency virus, which causes AIDS. Um, as an example, HIV uses um, glycoproteins embedded in its envelope. So now we have an envelope. The capsid is not very complex. This is the capsid here. Okay, so here's your capsid. And then you have an envelope. Now, if the virus has an envelope, the envelope will be similar to a cell uh, membrane, a plasma membrane. It will contain a phospholipid bilayer, and the glycoproteins that attach to the host will be located in, in the envelope rather than the capsid. So um, this virus also is called a retrovirus. And it contains an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. That's the little orange, round orange enzymes that are attached to the um, RNA. So it's an RNA virus, um, and it contains reverse transcriptase. So if you remember, transcription is when DNA codes for messenger RNA. We learned about that in Bio 111. So if it's reverse, the RNA is actually going to be used to make a molecule of DNA. So that's what the reverse transcriptase is used for, is to convert the RNA, which is the genetic material of this retrovirus, into DNA. And then the DNA is used to um, code for, you know, protein. It's, it, um, it goes through the transcription and translation. Uh, transcription and translation steps like we learned in Bio 111. Um, retroviruses are really hard to make a, a, a vaccine for. So they are able to trick the host cells, you know, and um, a lot of times they mutate frequently. So this is um, an image of someone who has the variola virus. Um, which I, I want to say that it's smallpox, but anyway, the, you see an image of the rabies virus, which looks a little bit like um, E. coli in this image, um, but, but this is an image from an electron micro, microscope. So it's, you know, the virus is much smaller than an E. coli would be, but it's kind of rod shaped like E. coli. But the rabies virus, um, so we're just talking about shapes, but viruses can be classified by their genetic material and the design of their capsid. So here the genetic material is single-stranded RNA, and that's for the rabies virus, and the capsid um, does contain an envelope. The ca capsid is formed from proteins and it does contain an envelope, and the glycoproteins are found within the envelope. Um, the variola virus, which causes the symptoms that you can see in the skin of that individual in image B, contains double-stranded DNA, and it also contains a capsid, which has a, a, a which has a more of a oval shape than a than rod shaped. But um, anyway, it contains a capsid and an envelope as well. But it's got double-stranded DNA instead of single-stranded RNA. All right. These are some examples of class of viruses by um, classifications using their um, DNA. 
using their genetic, their genome structure, okay? So examples of viruses that um, their genetic material is RNA include rabies virus and retroviruses, um, the HIV um, that, that we just looked at. And actually the cold virus is a retrovirus. Um, DNA viruses are the herpes virus, um, the one that causes genital herpes and also um, like cold sores that you get on your mouth. Um, and then the smallpox virus is a DNA virus. All right, and some of these are found in, in different, um, like the rabies virus, you see it in the RNA classification and you also see it single-stranded. So that just tells you that rabies has single-stranded RNA. Retroviruses also are made of single-stranded RNA. Um, but you can have uh, single-stranded DNA as well, and you can also have double-stranded DNA. Um, the smallpox virus and the herpes virus are double-stranded DNA. But what we don't see here are examples of single-stranded DNA and double-stranded RNA, and there are examples of both of those. Um, the chromosome for the rabies virus, the retroviruses, the herpes virus, and the smallpox virus is linear, like human chromosomes are linear. And the papillomaviruses, um, genital warts, for example, is um, caused by HPV, the human papillomavirus, um, and many bacteriophages, which are, of course, are viruses that infect bacteria, have circular chromosomes. And then at the bottom, we see non-segmented. The genome consists of a single segment of genetic material, and the parainfluenza viruses, influenza, of course, causes the flu. Um, parainfluenza viruses are a little bit different. Um, from the regular flu, but uh, segmented means the genome is divided into multiple segments, and the influenza viruses, which actually cause what we think of as what we call the flu, you know, what we get flu shots for, are segmented. So that's a classification simply based on genetic material. You can also classify viruses by capsid structure. So naked means it doesn't have an envelope just has a capsid. So the viruses that are naked icosahedral are hepatitis A, polioviruses, the Epstein-Barr virus. Um, I'm sorry, just hepatitis, I'm sorry. Hepatitis A and polioviruses. And then the enveloped icosahedral means it still has that icosahedral shape, but it's also got an envelope. That would be the Epstein-Barr virus, the herpes, simplex viruses, rubella virus, and yellow fever virus, and also HIV, HIV-1. Um, then you have enveloped helical structures, um, helical capsids that have an envelope around them, and that's influen influenza, mumps, measles, and rabies. And then you have naked helical, so the capsid is helical, but it does not have an envelope outside of it. That's the tobacco mosaic virus, the very first virus that we studied in this chapter that infects plants more than just tobacco. And then you can have complex capsid structure um, with many proteins. Some have combinations of icosahedral and helical capsid structures, um, the herpes virus, the smallpox virus, uh, hepatitis B, and then the T4 bacteriophage, which we've seen a picture of. It had the head and the tail. That's obviously a complex structure. Um, here are some examples. A is naked icosahedral. Picture B is enveloped icosahedral. You see the, um, this is the capsid and then the, the envelope outside of it. All right, and then C is enveloped helical. D, you may remember this, is the tobacco mosaic virus, um, which is naked helical. Um, and then E is complex, is an example of a complex. They don't have the um, bacteriophage T4 on here. But anyway, these are just images of the, the um, back, uh, viruses classi classified by their capsids and, and their envelopes.